Okay, good afternoon and welcome to the Grid for iPad uh, webinar. Over the next half an hour, we're going to take a look at the app and give you a tour of the key features to get you started. My name is Kerry Vaccara and I'm obviously from Smartbox. We've also got Emma from Tech Support um, on the session who will be answering questions as we go along. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with Grid for iPad, it's a complete AAC platform that includes instant access to resources for both symbol and text communication. It's got a touch first design. It's got an intuitive user interface, which includes in-app editing that enables you to edit and create resources directly within Grid for iPad. Um, and it's designed for anyone without speech and it's suitable for a wide range of conditions. So I'm gonna take you over now to look um, at Grid for iPad. Up. I know there's a bit of a lag between what I'm doing and what you can see on the screen. Okay, so what you can see in front of you um, is the familiar Grid Explorer. For those of you who are using Grid 3, you'll already be aware of this. Um, Grid Explorer is where we go to store and manage our grid sets. When you first open Grid for iPad, Grid Explorer is blank, and that's to allow you to populate it with the grid sets that you need. And to add a grid set, you simply choose the three dots, the icon on the top right-hand side, and you'll get a drop-down menu bar. From there, we can go to select Add Grid Set. Now, just to give you an idea, Grid for iPad is packed full of resources, so you can browse through um, the range of smart box resources and grids from our online community. I'll just give you an idea of how everything's organized. At the top here, you can see that we've got smart box grid sets, and those are divided into symbol text, symbol communication, text communication, interactive learning, and accessible apps. If I scroll down a little bit, you've got online grid options. And this is where you go to find um, grids that have been contributed not only by the Smartbox team, but also by the Smartbox community. Um, down at the bottom, you can see we've got the option to add a blank grid set and copy a grid set. Blank grid sets are where you'll go to create a new grid set if you wanted to make one from scratch. So we're going to start by adding a grid set. So I'm going to go into symbol communication. And I'm going to select the Supercore grid set. And I'll go for the main super core. And I'll select add. And what you'll see is that the um, icon, the super core grid set has been added to the grid explorer behind me. Whilst I'm here, I'm also going to add in the text talker grid set that we'll be looking at later on. So I'm going to go back. And right back again until I can go into text communication. And I select Text Talker, and I'm going to go to Add. If I close that by tapping on Grid Explorer, I can see that I've now got two grid sets behind me. Just to show you, if I go to the three dots again to bring down the menu on Grid Explorer, I can see um, that I've got options here to arrange grid sets. So if I select that, you'll notice that I've got the option to do things, and um, the X is in the corner so I can delete the grid sets. I can also select create folder, which you can see on the top left hand side. And here I can give name my folder. So we'll call this symbol AAC. And then what I can do is drag Supercore into the symbol AAC folder. It just means that if you're like me and you love to have all your resources into nicely, nice, neat named folders, you can organize them rather than having to scroll through a number of screens. Once you're happy with your um, arrangement of Grid Explorer, I'm going to press Done on the top right-hand side. 
and it takes me back to Grid Explorer. So that's our starting point um, for Grid for iPad. What we're going to do now is spend a little bit of time looking at symbol communication. Uh, we're going to look at text communication, and then we're going to do some basic editing. So the first thing we'll do is have a very quick look at Supercore. Obviously, in half an hour, we've not got enough time to do a detailed session on this, but just to give you an idea of what's in there. So I'm going to go into the folder that I created and open up the Supercore resource. Now, for those of you who don't know a lot about Supercore, Supercore was created, um, was developed by one of our in-house speech and language therapists, Daisy Clay. It's a core vocabulary system, and if you're not sure what that is, um, core vocabulary makes up around 80% of the language that we use. Um, and you can see on the home page here, the core vocabulary moving from left to right. Um, I've got the pronouns, so the yellow words, the, the people words. If you move across to um, the green, we've got the verbs and the action words. And then if we move to the blue, those are our adjectives and describing words. And then the gray cells are what we call little words. So the idea with a core vocabulary system is that you can create most of your message from the top screen so that you don't have to keep navigating on and off into different groups. So what I'm going to do is just model um, some phrases for you. What you should notice as I type, um, Supercore includes smart grammar and predictive next words. So if you look at the row of purple cells at the top, um, and the first set of verbs, so to, be, can, do, have, what you'll notice is that they change as I type. And that's to help you um, support, help support quicker and more effective AAC. So let's have a go. Um, we'll do I, I like, like this. this. So you can see that message has gone up into the message window. And if I select the message window, I like this. It should repeat the message back to me. So I'll clear that. I, I need, need more, more help. help. And again, if I select the message window, I need more help. It repeats the message. And we'll do one more. And just remember, look at the purple cells um, and the first row of verbs just to see how those change as we type. So do, do you, you want, want to. to See more. Do you want to see more? Okay. So you can see we can say quite a lot from that top screen without having to navigate anywhere. Now, on the right hand side, you can see two um, sort of turquoisey columns. These are what we call our dynamic columns, and these contain what we call context specific vocabulary. So at the top, you can see we've got daily and play activities. And these include lots of activity grids which are taken from typical daily and play activities that a child might do. So I'll go in and just show you uh, what's on both of those. So I'm going to go into daily first. And what you'll notice is as the screen changes, the core vocabulary stays the same, which means we're giving our users access to the core vocabulary all the time, whilst being able to navigate through and find what we call fringe vocabulary, so more topic-specific vocabulary. I'm going to go into sleeping, which is down the bottom. You can see here that I've got some phrases that are directly related to bedtime routine, for example. I might want to um, read my story and I might want to use my message just by using the dynamic columns. So, story. Choose story. Choose story. Or what I might want to do is combine the core vocabulary with the language that's in the dynamic columns. So, I'll go I, I want, want read. And read. I want read. And again, I can repeat that back. On the top right hand side here, um, you can see that we've got the option to go into phrases. Again, what that does is change the dynamic columns, but it keeps the core vocabulary consistent. So now I can see that I've got 
preset phrases relevant to bedtime. I want my teddy. I want my teddy. So I can select I want my teddy. Again, all of these are generally there to help make uh, messaging faster uh, and much more efficient for the users. I'm going to navigate back to the home grid and I'll just show you the sorts of things that are in the play activities as well so you can see. You can see there we've got things like singing, reading, bubbles, um, cars, trains, all um, very typical activities that we'd find some of our young users um, doing on a daily basis. If I go into bubbles, for example, what you'll see is that the columns on the right hand side are giving me um, vocabulary specifically related to that activity. So I can select, for example, blow, blow bubbles. bubbles, and at the same time, blow bubbles. I can use my core vocabulary to say, I, I want, want more bubbles. bubbles. I want more bubbles. Okay. The other thing to bear in mind with Supercore is that it does support literacy development. So on the bottom right hand side under spelling, there is a phonics keyboard. Um, it's an ABC keyboard, and if you look uh, on the right-hand side, you can see that there are other key keyboards available within Supercore for you to choose the right keyboard for your user. This phonics keyboard is really just designed um, for you to just allow the user to play with sound a little bit. So, for example, if I was going to play, start typing the word cat. K. K. Ah. Ah. See, I've got the word cat in my message window. Cat. I can hear it back and it's also added the symbol for them. The other thing to note is on the home screen, you'll notice that there are a number of cells. Um, I'm just waiting for it to change over on the live stream. There are a number of cells which don't have symbols um, with them as well as the text. And that's really because we've included um, symbols when they're going to be helpful. Um, for the user, particularly for some of the smaller words like to, a, the, it's often as simple um, to teach the user the actual um, grapheme, so the look of the word, as opposed to then having to teach them um, a symbol for that word, which can often be quite abstract. Okay. It's definitely uh, worth having, spending some time um, exploring Supercore and becoming familiar with its features. There's uh, approximately 2,000 words available in Supercore, so I'd recommend that you download it and spend some time exploring it and finding where everything is. What I'm going to do now is go back to Grid Explorer and we'll have a look at our text communication before we go into editing in Grid for iPad. So for those of you that aren't familiar with this, um, Text Talker is our text communication grid set. So it's designed for fast and efficient messaging um, and it uses features such as chat history, quick phrases and word prediction. Um, it's there to make communication as fast as possible really. So what you can see on the screen now um, is the keyboard, the main page on Text Talker. You can see I've got the message window, the white area at the top, and then below that um, I've got um, my word prediction and chat history. And again, that's to help me generate my message ever so slightly quicker. Um, so I'm going to start by trying to make a message. So I'll go, I, um, I want, oops, space would be useful. I, I want, want. A, a. Um, I'll have a T, please, I think, this time of day. A T, T with, with, and I'd like that with milk. So you can see in my prediction there, milk is the first one being predicted. Milk. Um, if I want to store any of the messages that I use, I can go into um, my quick phrases 
And here you'll notice that what we've got is um, the categories on the left and right hand side. And in the middle, we've got the language that we'll want to go into access. So if I want to add I want tea with milk into my quick phrases, um, I'm going to select the category going out, which is a uh, fourth one down on the right hand side. And down the bottom, you should see that there's two blue circles, one that says add and one that says remove. So to add the message, I'm going to select the plus. And then I'm going to select the cell um, that's free that I want to add it to. And the message is instantly brought down into that category. So again, if there's something, um, a message that you've created that you want to save really quickly in quick phrases, you can just add it instantly. The other thing that you'll notice on the top uh, left hand side um, is the message banking icon. Now message banking um, is a fantastic tool which allows users to record uh, messages using their own voice or have somebody record a message for them. So I've just clicked on that and gone to the message banking screen. Um, on here, it takes you through step by step recording a message. Um, what I'm not going to do in this session um, is go through the message banking, but you select record new message. And then you go to next and it will ask you to start and stop the recording and you make the recording and then you can save it and you can do multiple messages one after the other. I definitely, definitely recommend spending some time having a look at the message banking. So that is a very quick overview of text talker. Um, again, definitely spend some time familiarizing yourself with that and just getting to know how the different features work. The next thing we'll look at then, I'm going to go and do some basic editing. So I'm going to add um, a blank grid set for this because sometimes I find it slightly easier if you're learning how to edit to do it with a blank grid set than one that's already got existing content in it. So I've selected my menu from the top right hand side of Grid Explorer and I'm going to select add a grid set which is where we went at the very start of the session. Um, I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to find the option where it says blank grid set. Here it will ask me to give it a name. So I'm going to call it webinar just so I remember what it's from. And you can see I've got options to do things like select the number of columns and rows, to change the picture that's on the front of it, to set the language of the grid set, etc. I'm going to select done. And that grid set is now added to my grid explorer. So I'll open up the grid set. And the first message that you'll see is that it says there's nothing in it, so I need to edit some cells. So that's what we'll do. To do that, we're going to go to where the menu's been um, on Grid Explorer and we'll select the three dots on the right hand side. And what you should see um, in a minute when the stream catches up is that there's an option which says edit grids. Okay. So in front of me, I've got all of the cells that are in my grid. And to go into grid editing, what I need to do is select the cell that I want to use. So I'm just going to pick any cell. And what I'll get is a menu. Um, that says, it's asking me basically what do I want to do with that cell. Um, and there's three options there on the top, which are usually the most popular, which are write and speak, play a recording, and jump to another grid. There are obviously lots more commands uh, within Grid for iPad available, which you can find under Show More, which is at the bottom. I'm going to select the Write and Speak. What this does um, is now it zooms in on the cell, and it zooms in on the area of the screen that I've chosen to edit, which just makes it slightly easier to editing for editing, so that you're not trying to have to look closely yourself on um, an iPad. You'll see that the cursor is flashing ready in the cell to go, so I know where to type. So all I need to do now is add my text. So I'm going to add the word life to this cell.
as I type, what Grid for iPad will be doing is searching for a symbol which goes with that word. And I can see that it's added um, the symbol for like already onto the cell for me. You don't have to automatically use the symbols that are put in in the same way that you can with Grid 3. You can edit um, any of the symbols that you want to use on a cell. And you can also use um, photographs, for example. So to edit the cell, what I've done um, is clicked on the symbol for like and it's brought up the picture window on the right hand side. So I can use a range of set, uh, symbols there, which have been given as an option, or I can select find picture. Now below, I've got options um, to go and browse through the symbols. I can go into my photo library. Um, I can go and do a web search or I can look at the cam, uh, go and take a photograph with the camera. So there's lots of different options in Grid for iPad um, for adding different images uh, relevant for an individual user. I'm actually going to stick with the like symbol um, because I like that. Um, so you can see how quick it is to add information to a cell. The other things that you can do within Grid for iPad are quite quickly um, edit and change the look um, of an individual cell or the actual grid. On the right hand side you'll see you've got two tabs, one called commands and one called style. The commands tab obviously tells you what the cell that you've just created is going to do. The style tab will tell you um, all of the changes that you can make to that cell to personalize it and make it look um, the specific, um, spe specific look. So under the style tab We've got things like to change the shape, uh, the fill, the border, you can change the font, and um, there's lots of different things that you can change. And again, I'm not going to spend this session necessarily having a look through all of those, but if I go in, for example, to cell fill, what it would give me is all of the different colours that I could um, pick initially from the colour palette. I've also got the option to adjust the colour. So I'm just going to pick um, a pale yellow background for my cell. Once I've made that selection, it will instantly show it on the cell to give me an example. And that's really helpful if you're like me and you're not necessarily very good at um, specific design things. So you need to have um, more um, support for that. And then once I go into, I'm going to go back to style and I'm going to select the cell border. Again, similar, it brings up a colour palette for me um, and if I make any choices, it will automatically update the cell on my screen so I can see what it looks like before I make any final decisions. Once you're happy with all of your selections, I'm going to go back into the style menu and what I can see is that it's given me thumbnails of the colours that I've picked so that I can look back at those if I need to at any point in time. Again, as I've already said, there are lots and lots of different options um, for you to change the style um, and change symbols within Grid for iPad. So I'd recommend that you spend some time looking at the editing and all of the different features in it. Once you're happy with the editing and you go back to the main screen, I can select finish editing from the top left hand side. And now I've got my cell on my screen. And that means that I can try out um, and just test whether the cell works. Like. Like. So what you should hear now is um, that cell like. saying like. Okay, so I hope that's given you an idea of how easy it is to do editing in Grid for iPad. The best way to learn, as I've already mentioned, is just to download the app, um, download the trial for 30 days and have a play and find out where everything is. And if you've got any questions, you can contact the Smartbox team. So the last thing that we're going to look at then um, is settings. So I'm going to go into the settings using the menu bar, which is where we've been throughout this session. So it's the three dots on the top right hand side. Now the menu bar, um, the settings, sorry, um, there's a lot of different settings that you can look at within Grid for iPad. 
um, and I'm not going to go through them all in too much detail today. But what I will do is just give you an overview of what's in each section. And the first one that we're going to look at is access. And that's where you'd go to look at uh, things like highlight style and colour um, to make sure that when your, um, uh, your message is being read back that the colour is appropriate for your user, for example. The speech options are one that ones that hopefully you'll be fairly familiar with. The speech options are where you go to change your speaking voice um, and when you can go for important things like pronunciation. So particularly names sometimes are not pronounced correctly and you can go and alter the way um, irregular words are pronounced under um, the speech setting. Now the writing settings are again worth exploring. There's quite a lot in there. Symbols, for example, in the writing section is where you can go to change the settings for specific images. So if you want to put the word mum, for example, you may always want a photograph of mum to appear rather than one of the symbols from a specific symbol set. The other thing that you've got in there is the option to change chat history. Chat history is obviously stored throughout um, the conversation if you've got that option switched on. You can go and remove any unwanted messages from the chat history under the writing setting. And there's other things you can put in there like abbreviations. But again, spend some time going through each of the settings and learning about what they do and how they can help support your particular user. Accounts is obviously fairly obvious. That's where you go to set up things like your Smartbox account, um, the Dropbox account that you may have linked, and also um, where you'd go to set up the remote editing accounts that you're happy um, for people to remote edit any particular grid set. Purchases is fairly straightforward. That's where it goes to talk about um, what, you've, what your purchase history is. The help one is one that I really just want to draw some attention to. So the help section here that you can see um, is a, a basically um, a question and answer section which talks about um, everything I've gone through in this session and lots more. So if you are using Grid for iPad and you're online um, and you want to know how to do something, so you want to know how I've selected here how to get into edit mode, or you want to know um, how to make a right cell, which is what we've just done in this session, you can go into the help options, you can scroll down and you can select any of the questions and it will give text talker. Now super core, if you remember, um, that is our core based vocabulary system. Super core has got 54 locations um, and it's got approximately 2000 words in it talked about features like predictive next word, we talked about smart grammar, um, and we talked about um, the context specific vocabulary, so we looked at the play and um, the daily activities. Next we looked at text talker, uh, that's our text based communication system, so for fast and efficient message generation. Uh, we talked about chat history, phrases, we talked about word prediction, um, we didn't go into message banking in detail, but I did give you um, a very quick overview of message banking. Um, and again, what I'd recommend that you do with both of these is spend some time um, exploring them really. I think that's really important. Um, I mentioned previously you can download a 30-day free trial from the App Store. Um, and as part of that 30-day free trial, you'll obviously get access to all of our resources and you'll get access um, to have a look on online grids and you can do all of the editing that you could usually do within the full version of Grid for iPad. Um, if I just put this up now, that just about brings us to the end of the session. If you've got any questions, as I said at the start, my name is Kerry, so you can email me directly. If you want to get in contact with our support team, who are completely amazing, then I'd recommend um, that you get in contact with those and ask them any questions that you might have whilst you're playing with the 30-day trial of Grid for iPad. Um, but thank you very much um, for logging in today, and I hope that this was useful. <laughs>